Horses aren't native to the American West any more than those iconic palm trees are to California. Did I just blow your mind? Hey people of the new world and the old world, Trace here coming from DNews. I don't know about Europe, Asia, and Africa, and Australia, but here in the Americas, we don't really think about the new world versus the old world stuff. The thing is, we should know these things because, you know, we should appreciate how nature can create fantastic variations from creatures brought back and forth by ship. The old world means the earth as Europeans knew it before they tried to sail off the western edge of the known sea. The New World is considered North and South America, but depending on the text, it sometimes includes Australia and many of the island nations of the Pacific. We often portray non-native or invasive species in a negative way, but they're not always. Yes, the jackrabbits of Australia with no natural predators are pretty much devastating the outback, but as I mentioned earlier, horses had an ancestor in the New World that went extinct somewhere around 11 to 13,000 years ago, and the ones we have now were brought over by Europeans. And those tall palm trees in California California were planted by Spanish missionaries, but now they're both considered iconic to their respective areas. Often the phrase, as American as apple pie, is thrown around here in the United States, which is weird because, you guys, the apple is native to Asia. Yeah, the first apple trees were likely brought over here by Europeans around the same time as other fruit trees. Most fruits were cultivated by Asian and African cultures long before they made it here to the New World. Today, one of the oldest cultivated fruit trees in the United States is more than 140 years old than the Declaration of Independence. This pear tree was planted in 1630 in Plymouth, Massachusetts and is still growing. But the pears haven't been well received, apparently. They're unattractive and, quote, coarse textured. Ugh. There is one native apple to the United States, though, the Red Delicious. It was a chance seedling or unintended crossbreed of a tree found on a single farmer's field in Iowa long after we had the United States. That one tree was then rebred and reprodded all across the world. How Johnny Appleseed on the spot. But we're not the only ones to build part of our identity around imported species. If you've heard of the term Banana Republic, not in reference to the more expensive Gap store, but its political science term, it's usually attributed to Caribbean countries in a fictional way to those ones that bananas are their main export. But bananas aren't even native to those places. They were first cultivated in South Asia. But I think my favorite non-native species is the potato. Yep, there were no potatoes in Russia for vodka or Ireland or for, for the potato famine, I guess. They're native to Peru and Bolivia. The old world didn't have pumpkins, pecans, cashews, or peanuts. No vanilla, no tobacco, avocado. The worst of all, the rest of the planet had never experienced chocolate until it was exported from Central America. Seriously, y'all. Is there a non-native species that did a really good thing for the country it was imported to or that you just can't live without? Tell us about it and I'll see you next time on DNews.